In this video, I'm going to prove the Toplitz theorem. In some cases, it's very useful. So we are given some sequence t and k. k is a some fixed positive integer, any fixed positive integer in between 1 and 0. And if the sequence is non-negative, and if the sum of t and k, k from 1 up to n, is equal to 1, if the limit of t and k is equal to 0, as n approaches infinity, if a n approaches a, and then we have this following conclusion, that the limit of the sum of t and k times a k, k from 1 to n, is also equal to this a. Here's the proof. So, special case. If a is equal to 0, then could this limit also be 0? That's what I want to prove. So, any given epsilon, can I find a capital N when little n is larger than this capital N? Can I show that the absolute value of sum from 1 up to n, t and k, times ak minus 0, can it be small enough? In other words, the absolute value of from at sum from 1 to n, t and k times ak, can it be small enough? In other words, that is no larger than the absolute at absolute value of t and k times ak. Using the triangle inequality, you can loosen the inequality a little bit. T and k, I don't need the absolute value, because it's already non-negative. Can I show? I'm going to break it into two different sums. How? How can I break it into? First of all, I know that the limit of a n is a. Therefore, given n epsilon, right? I'm using this epsilon. I'm going to derive half of epsilon from this epsilon. For this half epsilon, then I can find a capital N1, so that when little n is larger than this capital N1, then the absolute value of a n minus 0, right? Special case, 0. Minus 0 can be small enough. Right, therefore, I'm going to split my sum into two sums. First of all, sum from 1 all the way up to capital N1, right, this capital N1, T and K times AK, absolute value, plus the other sum, K from capital N1 plus 1, all the way up to little n, T and K, times AK. In that case, I can loosen the inequality just a little bit. How can I loosen the second sum? Second sum. Sigma. Sum from n1 plus 1 all the way up to little n t n k times a k absolute value is already small enough. As long as little n is large enough, right? partial sum already starting from n1 plus 1, right? So it can be replaced with half epsilon. Half epsilon taken out. Half epsilon. Right? So second sum losing. First sum, how can I lose in that? First of all, because ak, an has a limit. Therefore, an has to be bounded. Let's say bounded by some positive integer, uh, positive constant m, Replace every ak with m, take m out. So m is taken out. k from 1 to n1, t and k. t and k. Right? So first sum loosened, second sum also loosened. So then I can use the fact that the T and K. K from 1 to N sum up to 1. Here I only sum up to only starting from N1 plus 1. 
right? That's only a partial sum. Also, because T and K is non-negative, therefore, partial sum has to be no larger than one. Right? Also, losing further. So, less than or equal to this is losing to be just half epsilon. Right? This part, this part, T and K, what happens with T and K? Right? T and K. So, according to the to this epsilon, I can derive another positive constant called epsilon over twice times capital M times capital N1. Right? For this positive number, I can find a capital N2, so that when little n is larger than capital N2, then according to the definition of the limit of uh, T and K, T and K, absolute value, minus zero. Abs I don't need the absolute value, because it, it's already non-negative, can be small enough, small, smaller than epsilon over twice of capital M times capital N1. So in this case, I can replace every t and k with this value, right? t and k with this value. And so that's epsilon over twice of m times capital N1. And how many of them? How many of them? One all the way up to capital N1. N1 many of them, right? Times N1 times the front n, right? So n1m, n1m, they just cancel out. I'm only have left with epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2. That's epsilon, right? So in other words, I've really found a capital N that is the maximum of capital N1 and capital N2, right? So when little n is larger than this capital N, I've really shown that the absolute value of my desired sequence N0 can be small enough, right? Can really be small enough, smaller than epsilon. Right, this given epsilon. Now I'm done with the special case where a is equal to zero. Now, general case when a is not equal to zero. Now I'm gonna destruct, construct a new sequence called bn. bn is a n minus a. Right, because a n approaches a, therefore bn approaches zero. Now, Bn satisfies the special case. Right? Bn approaches zero. Therefore, I can use my pro previous proven special case where sequence approaches zero. Then, T and K times this sequence approaches also zero. Right? So, in other words, the sequence K from 1 to N, T and K times Bk should approach zero. My special case. In other words, T and K. What is BK? BK is AK minus A. AK minus A. This is approaching zero, right? In other words, if I split it into two partial sums, or two sums, K from 1 to N, T and K times AK minus sigma sum from 1 to n TNK times A. TNK times A. Right? All together they approach zero. Now, I can first of all take the A out of here, out of the outside of the sum. 
right? Because it's a constant. A times the T n k. T n k is assumed to be sum up to one. All right, they sum up to one. So therefore, this whole thing, right? Minus a times one. This whole thing is just a. Right, so my desired sequence minus a approaches zero. Therefore, my desired sequence can only approach a as n approaches infinity.